I'm Christina Bertia, and I work with Greywater Action. And Greywater Action is a nonprofit that uh, likes to educate people about how to use their gray water and their rainwater. And so we teach hands on installation workshops, which is what's happening here today. What we're doing here is we've basically taken the drain hose from the washing machine, which was going into this standpipe. We've taken it out of the standpipe, and we are going to connect a three way valve with this barbed fitting into this standpipe. It's going to get mounted right here so that it's easily accessible. It wants to be above the top of the washing machine, but it's going to be accessible right here. And one side of this three-way valve is going to go back to the sewer. So if you're washing diapers or something that has toxic chemicals on it, or if you're washing a bleach load, you can send it back to the sewer because you don't want that going to your garden. The other side of the three-way valve is going to go out to the garden. And on its way out to the garden, at the high point, we're going to put an auto vent, which is this item, which basically lets air into the system in case there's a siphon forming, so that as the, as the drain water is being pumped out of the machine to the garden, when it starts to refill, we don't want the refill water going to the garden. So this little auto vent will let air in. It wants to be at the high point. So that will go right there. And then the pipe to the valve will come here. And what's happening here is it's going underneath the crawl space of the kitchen, which is behind us, and then out to the garden. So this is very simple. This does not require a permit. Basically, you're just, you're not changing any plumbing. You're just taking the drain house, hose out of where it was going, attaching the three-way valve, having one side of the three-way valve go right back exactly where it was going before to the sewer. But now you have the choice of turning the handle and sending the gray water to the garden. So it's a very elegant, simple system. And anybody can do it. And anybody can do it. And the materials are usually around $200, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. It's um, very accessible to learn how to do it. There's many uh, good instructions online, or you can take workshops and learn how to do them. It's a top loader. Top loaders, as far as we know, use somewhere between 30 to 50 gallons per load. The um, front loaders are much more efficient. They use maybe 15 to 25 gallons per load. So you can see if you have an older machine, you actually can capture a lot of water and divert it to your garden, which is a good thing given that we have a drought. Depending on where you live, we figure a fruit tree in the Bay Area where it's not too warm uh, needs about 10 gallons a week. So you could water four fruit trees, four and a half fruit trees. So, um, or, or if you're doing berries or other kind of, you know, we encourage people to grow food. So, you know, any kind of sh uh, perennial food producing shrubs, you could be watering with your gray water. I like to work with the curvature of the pipe as much as you can. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Yeah. So also, in the, the whole package here, there's water from the front and there's a possibility of putting tanks on the side of the house that would be above ground storage, which has more flexibility, but it's more expensive because it's kind of like a, it's a dollar a gallon or something like that. Um, but it's the cheapest way to store water is in the ground. And so that's why we've got a swale here and it's, it's on contour. Well, here with the wood chips? With the wood chips. Like you said, kind of like a ditch. And, and um, this is a, a handcrafted A-frame by Larry, yeah. who isn't here at the moment. Oh, like an old horse like or something. It's bubble level, um, recycled dug fur. I like that. It's adjustable. You can calibrate it here. Yeah. And you just use it to find the contour across the hill. Oh, wow, that's because, handy. And so you could, this is three feet across. It could be four feet, and then it would be the inch fall if you were doing a diversion somewhere or working on a pipe. But this is a very simple way. If you don't have a laser level, um, this is a, a great way of, of getting the on contour. Yeah. And the reason it's on contour is that it puts water in any part of the ditch is going to go, in theory, all the way along. But it's also very important to have a lot of mulch because that organic matter is going to break down and create soil, but it's also going to hold a lot of moisture. And I could 
site examples that I've seen in the last couple of years where areas haven't been watered but it's been mulched for years and they're still growing amaranth and sun, sunflower into August. Yeah. So that's a very important point in holding the water and also the fact that um, it was mentioned about the groundwater earlier and um, this is moderating the groundwater and spreading it out. So we've got swell here, swell here and another one down to the chickens and in permaculture um, nothing serves just one function, it all has multiple functions so these are pathways as well, these are access points through the garden. Mm. And um, just recently as an addition but not part of the seed package is this Hugo culture bed again um, a, an opportunity to hold rainwater and this time last week it was yucca, ivy, juniper, a few old roses um, and just a, a few other pieces of dead oleander that were thrown in there and it was piled up and it was like a big green screen but now we've opened up I can't remember how many square feet and one possibility now would be to move the chickens from over there to the corner so that they had a run and for the next year then they can scratch and dig and help to work down that area which will gradually decompose and if you're not familiar with fugal culture there's a website called richsoil.org where there's some great diagrams of fugal culture and it's based on the concept that um, a unit of carbon holds three times its unit volume of water so it's going to be building soil but it's also going to be harvesting rainwater as well back up to here um, we, we mentioned guilds somebody mentioned guilds to me and we've got these uh, fruit trees which we are going to create guilds around it's a little more complicated with the fact that we've got grey water because some of the plants that we would be planting in a, a natural guild if it was just with rainwater we won't be putting around the grey water the, the leafy greens for example the chard, kale uh, broccoli, we'll keep those away from the grey water because there's, there's nowhere else for any toxins to go but in the leaf that we're going to eat. Um, so grey water is ideal for fruit trees because um, with fruits they're the reproductive organs of the plant and the plant usually doesn't store toxins in the reproduction part and being deciduous except for the grapefruit and the avocado but they will eventually lose their leaves that every year they drop their leaves and they can let go of toxins that they, they don't need. So we're going to be having different layers here in this food forest. There's the, the upper canopy layer, the tall trees, which would be the avocado and the grapefruit. Um, there's going to be a lower layer of trees, then a shrub layer. Um, shrub layer could be um, some of the, the, we have gomi berries, we have blueberries over there. There's going to be lavender, a few salvias. The herbaceous layer, which would be a lot of the annual vegetables that we're used to. Um, we're also going to be bringing in some perennial vegetables like sunchoke and okra um, and moshua. Uh, some, some low maintenance, easy to establish and to keep going year after year kind of vegetables. Then we've got um, a root layer and also a vine layer. We're going to make use of vertical space as well with um, some berries and some grapes. Uh, Are you doing all that in this area? All that, yes. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're, we're, so it's, it's 20, 25 to 12 now. So <laughs> The gray water is going the into gray. the mulch basins around the trees. Okay, okay got The it. rest of it is going to be watered by a drip water system from the regular watering system. Okay. I'm Tanya. I'm from Sassoon, uh, Fairfield area. And I'm here uh, because I'm actually a sustainable ag major and I'm really interested in how to utilize gray water systems and how to do the most that we can to uh, have a, or to contribute, I guess, to uh, sustainable practices. What do you so, think of this crowd right here? I actually, I love this. I love that, that the community has come together and are offering these workshops. Um, it, it's really great to implement it from your own personal home life. Uh, and then take that out in the community and share it with others as well.